I'm Ron Talley. I've been a licensed barber since 2010. Because of barbering, I've been fortunate enough to travel, see some rad places, and meet even better people. So with the help of my Uppercut Deluxe family, I decided to get out of the shop, hit the road, and introduce, in my personal opinion, some of the people that make this trade so special. This is a haircut with Ron Talley. She's so bad and pretty, never know what my people are gonna do. My little Lou, when she goes on down the street, look at the look at the look at the look at the look around. Well now, now she everybody out. You never know what my baby putting down. Well now everybody tell me I got the cutest little girl in a town. I'm gonna marry that girl next Saturday night. All right, man. State your name. My name is Dane Hesse. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Some right. call me the pig barber. How long have you been licensed? Uh, I think technically almost 12 years. You know the year that you got your license? Uh, I think I went to barber school in 2009 and started professionally in 2010, the beginning of 2010. So almost 10 years. Wait. Is that right? Yeah, 10 years this year then. Yeah. The idea was to go to law school, but I didn't try hard enough in college. <laughs> so that was going to be a struggle. And then... What college did you go to, Dan? Vanguard right here in Costa Mesa. Okay, right on. It's like a private Christian school. Very nice. I didn't want to go to college. My parents made me. It was like the only time I ever listened to my parents. Oh, okay. But... But yeah. technically we didn't because you didn't. Yeah, I, barber school instead. Yeah, I, did barber, <laughs> I did barber school after. Okay. So I got a, like a four-year degree in history and political science. Oh, okay. With the idea of going to law school. Mm -hmm. And then, I don't know. I just never, I like grew up in a construction family. So that, that was just, I feel like, you know, hindsight. Just fake. It was a fake ambition. Not that I couldn't do it. I'd probably be pretty good at it. Okay. But... It just isn't, like, there's nothing in me that would really connect to that long term, you know. Harvard here in Costa Mesa, his name's Mark Miller, and he, uh, he's cool, like, old punk rock dude, lived here his whole life. He's just a good dude, and just, like, very, like, he cuts by himself, and that was a big part why I started cutting by myself. Oh, okay. He was kind of... It because it's like, oh, it seemed nice. Like, you kind of do whatever you want, you talk about whatever you want. He just kind of told me one day, maybe you should try to be, you should go to barber school. Like a monkey could do this job. <laughs> it's true. Like he's not like, he's not technically a good barber, but he's a, uh, he's a good barber in, in the sense of, you know, he's always there. He, okay. his work is good enough. He, they, he has good conversation. He's able to talk about a lot of different things. Our industry has gotten super, there's portions of it that have gotten super like, sucked into the idea that you have to be this like spectacularly technical barber yeah and at the end of the day like there are plenty of people that just need a damn haircut so he kind of convinced me to go to barber school and i did and uh went to the real barbers college in in anaheim and it was no he's just a short polish dude that was in the military that was a pain in the ass yeah, I was gonna ask. What like, the hell I was, was there's a lot of people that had Not their right. opinions. Augie. 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 <laughs> Augie's a pain in the ass. Yeah, there's a lot of people that have opinions on on that. This is a thing. This is a thing, and like, okay. rest is all, and he cannot defend himself. So yeah, yeah, for sure. He's he's dead. <laughs> um, he didn't like pussies. Okay. And, and what's uh -huh. funny about barber school is you get all these fucking, these tough dudes. Oh, sorry, uppercut. That thought you can bleep it. <laughs> um, you get all these tough ass dudes, you know, they've been to prison or gangs or just think they're tough. Like, I'm going to be a barber, like blue collar or whatever. And he just absolutely owned those people. Okay. They'd come into the barber school and they would try to take. For him, it was uh, the laziness factor. Mm -hmm. Like, oh yeah, you think you're tough and whatever, but then you don't, you don't actually offer the world anything, and that's all he expected from people. And uh, him and I got into it a bunch because I would press against him super hard. His game was always to like your last month try to suspend you twice, 
She had to, she'd stay another month and pay more money. I was like, oh, now it's just gambling, you know? Dirty bastard. And I always just like threatened him right back. Uh huh. And it always worked, and him and I were good, and told me when I'd passed, he's like, I didn't even call. I didn't even call for you. <laughs> I just knew that you were going to, and I was like, that's oh, I like, our, I, I appreciate that. Yeah, that's fine. When, when did you realize owning your own shop? Mm. I mean, when did it happen? Barber, like when I went to barber school, I wasn't gonna go. I think the first step of going to barber school was like, can I even do this like well enough? Yeah, right? for sure, for sure. You don't know, like I like shaved my friend's head, shaved my own head, did mohawks and shit as a kid, but like actually cutting hair good enough to like, you know, make a profession out of it. Have someone pay you to do Yeah, it. and like you know, <laughs> consistently enough to pay your bills. Uh-huh. And once you got kind of past that, it was always, I was always going to do my own thing. The shop was probably, like, originally going to be called the pig. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, what's, what's the, what's the eagle and pig? Like, well, what's... eagle, I had a buddy that, when I, when we got into the shop here in Costa Mesa, um, he was going to do, like, like, God, I hate the light. I keep hearing the word light come out of my mouth. Oh, yeah. I want to slap myself. That's everybody, oh, I hate That's it. That's everybody, dog. I used to be more articulate before I became a barber. <laughs> Look at your right hand, Dean. I know. <laughs> uh, uh, Eagle. So my buddy's gonna do like American fur, like American-made furniture, clothing, like that kind of vintage thing. And he ended up having a, a second kid, and it just he had a, a good job that paid the bills a lot better than what you know, digging digging deep for that was gonna be, you know. Mm-hmm. And. Uh, and so, but that's where that kind of eagle America comes from. Okay. The pig, I surf a, like a style of surfboard a lot um, that are called pigs. And they're like late 50s, early 60s. They're very like unique, you know, look and like feel to them. Um, when I was in barber school, we had to park across the street from this school at like the Catholic church. We were allowed to park over there. Okay. And one night, I was, uh, I get into my car and I look on the ground and there's a little glow in the dark pig on the ground. Sick. And so like, you know when you do towel service, they always have like the strings wrapped around them. Uh -huh. Like the tie them tight. Yep. So I took one of those the next day and tied a noose around its neck and then <laughs> and hanging it, like have had it hung from my rear view mirror ever since. Okay. And that's where like we did a graphic that's uh, like a noosed pig. Mm hmm and everybody like the you, top hat yeah, yeah yeah and everybody thinks it's like a weird like why would you do that it's like oh, it's just it's literally been doing it for the whole time yeah there's been a glow literally about, something that just yeah. came together from a fucking yeah. parking lot at barber yeah, college yeah, exactly <laughs> it's just like you're bored like you yeah. know and you you think about and you're stuck there for you know at the time like i think it took me 10 months to do school and then like another you know 12 months total to get my date and like you know do my test and get my license okay did you work anywhere before you opened up no Pig? i did actually for nine months i worked at a shop in corona del mar that's uh not open anymore and uh, it was a good experience like i got so back to the the barber mark the one thing that i learned from him that like stuck with me ever ever since like going to that shop because I haven't been there in years okay was uh learn what not to do yeah like you know what you want if you you know if you sit down and you think about it you know what you want mm -hmm. and maybe not like total goals or any of that but you just know that you, you you have like preferences and so when I went to that shop I learned a lot about myself and what my preferences were and how I wanted things to be done and how I wanted to interact with my customers and that kind of thing. Okay. Yeah. All right. Tell me how you found this this space. So when I was working at the other shop, the owners there got a little they got a little cray cray. <laughs> they had they just yeah a little weird. This wasn't working. Without out. throwing anybody under their own bus. Yeah yeah. And uh, me and my buddy that was going to do the furniture and like clothing stuff. We just started driving around this side of town. This side of town was, has always been action sports. And, um, you know, there's a lot of Veruca, Volcom, Hurley, Quicksilver has been over here, Vans is over here at one point. Like, there's just a lot of, you know, young companies. And so there's good people that understand 
or understood what we were trying to do and enough connections between us like this made sense mm -hmm. but it was definitely before like you know barbering was cool again mm -hmm. or whatever but we just found it, dude there's these dudes that lived in here and like had a band and played in here and they're like surf kids and Sick. this place was just i just terrorized like holes in the wall broken tv glass like broken bottles they'd had a rager the night before oh fuck and the uh, our landlord here is really cool. They've been here, you know. Next year will be ten years. It's insane. And um, you know, they gave us a lease, like as is, and just kind of went from there. Do you have like pictures and everything? I'm sure you. I have, have a like, picture of like the station here. What it was like. Which is just like the plywood is like I put it up and I had hung the sink, like this whole wall right here. Mm -hmm. This whole wall right here. <laughs> We had to cut out my dad, like they said, that construction, my dad came and helped and they had like a bullshit shower in the, in the bathroom and so all of the walls were molded and so we had to cut it all out and like air it yeah. out and redo all the drywall and the framing and everything. Yeah. So I have a picture of it when it was like buttoned up mm -hmm. before I painted everything black. Okay. And uh, that's always a trip, like the mirrors on the floor, like, it's just weird. This is my, this is my like, my baby changing table. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah. Nice. And now it's your station? And now it's my station. That's perfect. It's taking a beating. That's pretty rad though. But it's, you know, it's weird. From wiping your ass. To I, from wiping my ass to cutting, cutting hair, hair all day long. <laughs> so you told me about State Board being here one time. Tell everybody about how it was when State Board fucking cruised up in here. Because it's an industrial area. It's not like. Yeah. You said yourself you didn't think that. Uh, that you could build a barber shop in here, that you could legitimately have a shop in here with a license. But you do. Yeah, now. I do. I had that have for a long time now. <laughs> but then it was it was weird, you know, the industrial space thing wasn't it wasn't it wasn't a normal practice. Now like this side of town has fucking seven coffee shops. Mm hmm You know, and like in warehouse spaces. So the the world has changed in the way that real estate's done and licensing and the city's old give you what you need and but yeah state board came in here one time and the girl that they came from state board was actually very nice she uh believed me i guess you know that <laughs> i really didn't know you know i made it i made it work and uh she looked over some things and she gave me some like grace on on it just basically pay a fine and uh pay for the establishment license which is what you have to have in california uh, you know, along with your barber's license, and because uh, I had business license and insurance and everything else, it was just like that. If you put yourself on the radar, then you're on the radar. <laughs> and I didn't know, like, I didn't have a, I didn't have a backup plan at the time, so it was, you just kind of had to make it work, you know. Yep. But she yeah. was cool enough. Huh? She was cool, and and yeah. I would say you played dumb, but I'm sure at that point you were just dumb. I was just dumb. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Like I just did, I had no idea, you know. Yeah, just you like, just, just like the rest of us, we don't know what the fuck we're getting into. We no, just got and they're not. I don't feel like they're not very good at making it like easy on you either. For sure. They want it to be hard so they can take money away. Yeah, down. so they can just collect their funds and go. Yeah, for sure. Actually, okay. here, I'll get you another one as you talk to everybody. Um. In the yeah. fridge over here. Yeah, bottom, bottom right drawer. Mexican beer, it's the best. It's good for you. It's got vitamins, I think. Talk about, uh, talk about being the first U.S. ambassador for Uppercut, what that was like. I know we've talked about it in the past. Yeah. So, both Ron and I both work for um, uh, Uppercut Deluxe, which is an Australian-based like, men's grooming brand. And uh, yeah, I've been very fortunate to have essentially worked with them my entire career. Uh, met the owners, uh, Steve and Kira, and their good friend Luke, and it was cool. There, there were some other people that were definitely like, Sorry. you want to call it cooler than me at the time when I started with the brand. That I don't know that the the Steve and Kira and Luke all just saw that you know my shop at the time met like the. the the brand where the brand was and where it came from skateboarding and surfing and like you know the traditional barber shop without a lot of frills and you know tattoos and just kind of 
I was just being me, mm -hmm. and it and and, and they uh, they gravitated towards it the same way I gravitated towards them. I used to my good buddy Tom found Uppercut on a, like a men's blog, GQ or something, you know, years ago now. And like all the packaging was different, and he's like, dude, I I, I needed a full, complete line. I didn't want to have to buy in a bunch of different brands and mm -hmm. their, the pomade industry at the time was a lot smaller than it is now and there weren't as many options and the options that did exist seemed just so flaky all the time mm -hmm. and so I was buying this stuff in from Australia air freighted and Kira was like giving me a deal on the product like a break because you know try to order enough because air freight was like 50 bucks a box every time oh shit and so like the price at the time, I think, was like 14 bucks, maybe 16 bucks. A can? But I was having to charge 20 for it. Okay. Because of how, how much it costs to bring it in from Australia. That's insane. And, uh, you know, now with everything, you know, the price is 20 bucks. But mm -hmm. I wasn't making any more money. I wasn't actually really making much money on it at all. I just liked it and it worked well. And my customers took to it. And so I kind of sucked it up for the team there. But then, I mean, you know, now, like, six or seven years into it I've been on a lot of trips with Uppercut and got to be a part of the brand growing and, and getting to go into a lot of different places and you know influence barbers and style and everything else you know it's it's, it's pretty cool yeah I remember you were saying like in the beginning of all this stuff being the only uh, like US ambassador you're you're pretty much taking the full load yeah <laughs> yeah I did like Basically every trade show that we did for a while, I mean for probably at least three, almost three years. Um, How gnarly was that, Dean? It's real. I mean, you, tra you travel a lot and there's a schedule, but then like any other random events, like if you're going to go to, you know, a, a skater surf shop that we're doing an event at or, you know, that kind of thing, like, and also balancing the schedule here in the shop and being good to my customers mm -hmm. and making sure that they taken care of and that they're getting their hair cut like it's one thing to like be cool and get to do and have cool experiences but if you're not able to balance like our industry like the only way we make real money is if we stand in like the 10 foot circle around our chair mm -hmm. as much as we can and, and keep those customers happy you Absolutely. know like if we don't all your customers pretty like understanding and shit though they, they, they are stoked for you when you when you do this stuff i think they used to more uh <laughs> Not so much now. No, now, because now it's hard to get hair. You know, it's hard to get hard to get haircuts. We do schedule. Yeah, well, but you, you ten, have to be in advance. Ten years in business. Yeah, and all that stuff. Yeah. yeah. So it's not like this thing. Okay. It's not like the most mellow environment to get in anymore. You know. For sure. Right on. So what's what's your favorite your most favorite place you've been to? because of cutting hair like where where did cutting hair take you as far as like your favorite place that you visited um australia yeah i got to do a great <laughs> trip to australia for a week we went from byron bay uh or from brisbane which is where uppercut's based out of you know mm -hmm. um and we did a road trip through byron bay and through newcastle and into sydney and I got to meet, you know, other uppercut ambassadors that have been at the brand, you know, longer than I had. Although, that are Australian, uh, yeah. Ones? So like Tommy J, yeah. Matt Chanowski, Pat Capocci, and then see, you know, the founders and a lot of the team that was over there. And like even Marky Mark was with the brand then and left see. and came back. Uh -huh. and, um, messy Mark. Yeah, Messy Mark. <laughs> Gosh, this is not a good nickname for him. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was, it was a great trip here. I got to like do and see things, and those are the those are the trips when you know, like I did a I cut Tommy's hair on the beach with some random clippers that I had never used before because you know the, the like, power supply, right? Like, oh like, yeah. So like, I didn't even all I, that shit's different. Whatever they had, Luke. That was those. That was a uh, uh, Luke. Well, Luke Dolan. Mm -hmm. That was his tool set that he brought from the UK, and I cut. I cut Tommy J's hair um, on the beach in Byron Bay. It was really cool. Oh, yeah. We all got tattoos. It was a good trip. For the time in my life, it was a good, like, helped me gain some perspective back on, you know, the industry and what I wanted from it or how I felt, you know, about 
you bust your ass for a brand and you know when they when they give back to you it's it's pretty cool you know it's, it's a great like it's a very gratifying feeling like i tried to work as hard as i could for uppercut in any capacity i could for as long as i could and now the brand's grown a ton and you know, my ability to do a lot of the cool like the hard work that i i could before like that wasn't mm -hmm. that it's not there the same way but it's all changed now it has all changed yeah absolutely but it's like when you go to when we do educations or you go to barber schools and people are like oh how do i i want to be sponsored how do i get sponsored and they ask mm -hmm. that question first it's like yep. Dude, you're into the you're in this for all the wrong reasons. Like Absolutely. already, like you're never gonna be sponsored. And I tell kids, like tell people that kids, all kids, like, not all kids, but yeah, some of them are grown ass men. Yeah, <laughs> but they ask those questions. It's like you're not gonna be sponsored. You're not gonna be you're not gonna be anything more than yourself. And if you're just I don't know, selfish and an asshole, then and all you want is that cool shit. You're never gonna get it. Like, yeah. I didn't want it. It just happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. People sort of like this stuff, like. It's just like handed over or something mm -hmm. like that. It's fucking insane. No, it's not. It's far from it. For sure. It's like some of these dudes, like, like you just brought up Luke Dolan. Like, there's not a lot of people that don't know. Like, that guy's fucking insane. Yeah. You know? Like, he has multiple barbershops in the UK, now in Moscow, in yeah. fucking Russia, you yeah. know? Along with having a band and, and then putting people yeah. on blast for all the shit that they're doing with uh, photo editing and yep. stuff, haircuts yep. down. Like, it, yeah, it's, it's well, insane. If you, know? you can't like, do it, like, I don't even put up haircut photos. <laughs> yeah, well, I think it's like one of those things that you've been doing it for so long now and, and everything too. It's like, you're kind of past all that shit. A lot of the, yeah. a lot of the newer barbers and stuff like that, it's just a platform for them to show totally. their work and get new customers and stuff. You've been in business for fucking 10 years, you know? Like, it's crazy. It's pretty we're insane have, like how everything's we changed. A, we're gonna need a nice party. Oh yeah. It's gonna be a rager. Fuck yeah. What's what's next? Do you uh, plan on doing anything next, or is like you just content with like uh, yeah the shop? I like there are some things I like to do. I have you know I have things that I've worked on that are kind of sitting in the dark right now that I just don't know how to do or don't know what I want from them. So it's really hard to okay. But you know we always do like cool T-shirts and stuff at the shop. Mm -hmm. and, like I might do more of that, but honestly like. Me and, my, me and my wife are having a kid. It's like, uh, yeah. Freaking, I want to be able to spend time with my kid and my wife and like do family. And like this job does offer that, you know. Like mm -hmm. it's strict. Like it's strict. Like if you're on a scheduled platform like we are and and it books out, like you can't just bail. Like you have to show up for work. But then the days that I'm not here, you know, I don't. I don't have to even think about it. Anymore. Yeah. Like it's not my friends that have other jobs. Like, or if I had become a lawyer. <laughs> You're still gonna think about that shit, right? Sure. Saturday, Sunday, Monday when I'm off, sure. I'm not cutting hair. I don't have to think about my job, you know? Mm -hmm. Freaking, I can run errands and go grocery shopping, and surf, sure. and sometimes ride my motorcycle and drive my truck. So it's, like, it's the best. Look, yeah. It's you know, a good job. There's definitely things that, like you said, that we can't do. We don't have benefits and no. vacation time or anything. Like if we're not behind the chair, we're not making money. Yeah, and that's something I'm actually working on right now with a buddy of mine. I'm yeah. trying to like create a a platform for barbers to be able to protect themselves a little bit better. Okay. It, it's a lot more work than I ever thought it was going to be. But when I was in barber school, <laughs> it was like when I thought like when I didn't think I would, if I didn't know, I didn't you know obviously hindsight right. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know that I was going to be able to like. A, cut hair good enough to get by for a long time, and B, just didn't know, obviously, like, that I'd be successful. Mm -hmm. So I was the whole time, like, learn what not to do, and that was one of them, like, mm -hmm. insurance or, you know, like, education, like, barbers don't, a lot of barbers become barbers because they don't really have another option. Yeah. Or they're creative and they're not that good at other creative jobs, not to take away from, like, what we do, but mm -hmm. it, it it definitely when I, when I went to barber school, and you went to barber school. It was like a it was a last chance for a lot of people. For sure. Where I went there is like I don't know. I want to be here because I I just think it could be cool. Mm -hmm. Like it could be a good job. It's honest work. Your customer likes you, and if they come back, that means that they like you, and you're doing a good enough job. Absolutely. Um, and that always resonated with me. So like in barber school, I was looked at some of those things, like the what not to do's or. And try to change those and like what, what could be done so i think next like i do want some other things that help help the industry um 
we're not very good to ourselves when it comes to that. Not at all. So that's kind of the, the focus that I'm getting on right now. But it takes a lot. Like after I think after the kids come on, it'll be a little bit easier. But no. right now it's hard. No, it won't. <laughs> <laughs> Not no. at all, dog. Not at all. <laughs> yeah, I'll just sit in the rocker, you know. <laughs> I'll talk to a recorder. Sit. Put my thoughts down. Speaking of thoughts, you got anything else? Man? Any final thoughts or, or anything you want to tell people out there, or anybody that's like inspired by you, your shop, uh, being an ambassador, being a father, uh, motorcycle car enthusiast, anything, anything outside. It doesn't even have to pertain to barbering, but anything you want to fucking tell people. Damn, that's a, that's hard. We got yeah, right. We don't have enough time on this tape. Dude. No, we don't. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm you sure sat on a plane with me before. So <laughs> Lots of complaining. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Everything I do is complaining. My wife, will, my wife will add to that. No, I, no, I mean, I, I, yeah, like I'm. It's, I like this. This is cool. Like I hope that a lot of other barbers and you get to do this with a lot of other people because it'll be fun to watch. I think so too. Um, you know, I don't. People just gotta be themselves and stop trying so hard to impress, impress like literally human beings that are never ever gonna benefit you much. Like, yeah, just especially for our industry, just go to work and make your customers happy, and they'll keep coming back to you. And be not an asshole to other people in our industry, which I can't stand. I don't understand. Like, I don't get. Mm-hmm. Like, other barbers, other places have no effect on what I do. No need for me to be like be upset about it. You know? Yeah, we're well, all doing the same thing. Yeah, all going to the same place, totally. just taking different routes to get there. Totally. Mm-hmm. It's like and in the shop, you know, you get like, you know, a, a customer. Like I had a good customer move for me to Justin this week because my schedule's too hard for him to book. Mm-hmm. And he pays the month that we have like the the swine clubs. He pay up front. And that's like you know, oh cool, Justin. You know, that's sick. Like Hundred and fifty bucks you just got right there plus <laughs> plus tip. <laughs> That used to be my money, <laughs> but at the same time, as like an owner of a barbershop that's you know been around for ten years now, and mm-hmm. you know, like I'm very grateful for the fact that people do know it and know about it and want to either emulate it or they do draw inspiration from it. Mm-hmm. Like I want to continue to be a good example for the industry and uh, not be not get ever get sucked into any of the bullshit. Because there's there's a lot of it. There's tons. Uh-huh. It's retarded. Just like anything else. Yeah. Just tons. like anything else. Tons. We just do it differently now. It's like Instagram. Yeah. It's fucking insane all that stuff. But I love this job and I'm very, very fortunate for, you know, the opportunity to have friends like you in the industry. Thanks, Dan. You know, so, you know other boys that were, you know, ambassadors with you, Shane. And all of them. There's so many now. Yeah, man. Cutting hair. Like... Yeah. It's pretty insane when you think about it, like the people that you've met, the yeah. places that you've been, the Absolutely. people that you continue to meet just sitting in your chair. Yeah. It's fucking insane. It's the best. It's insane. Just from cutting hair. Just from cutting hair. Is that exactly the name of this now? Just from cutting hair. Nah, nah, nah. nah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, cool. I think we can wrap it up. I mean, if you want, I'll yeah. talk all day, but. <laughs> I don't think it will. I don't think it will happen on this thing. Leave me. Baby, gonna break my poor heart in two. Oh. F.I. Gully. Break my poor heart in two.